All right, let's do deep cuts. Ready? Uh oh. Okay. Name a song, album, or artist that changed your life. Song, artist, or album that changed my life. Um, Queen 2. I mean, Nevermore is like, when I was working with the Struts, like Luke and I would oh. just listen to that song over and over. I learned how to play the piano part when I was a kid. And it was just like, there's no living in my life. I just like trying to sing like Freddie as a kid that could barely sing. It was just like, I mean, Queen 2 is probably that record for me that like, it's a deep cut record. It's yeah. not like there's no real hits on the record, you know? It's a concept album. Yep. And um, that's where that's what I'm st sticking with, Queen yeah, 2. Yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah. Your first concert. Um, Bow Wow Wow opening for the English Beat. Yeah. And, um, and, I, and I remember it was at the Greek in Berkeley and I was a freshman in high school and it was like this junior, yeah, this junior girl came up to me and she had English speed, you know, that the, the t-shirt with the little, the dancing girl on it, the, yep. the cartoon character with the English speed. And it was like, she came up and started talking to me and it was like, it was a moment. It was like, this girl's talking to me and she's older than me. And I was just <laughs> like, I'm like, this is where I want to be the rest of my life. Right here. <laughs> totally. at the, at the English beat, the Greek. A hundred percent. Isn't that beautiful how just music can just connect people instantly? It's instantly, the best. It's yeah. the best. What is a song you wish you wrote? Uh, Every Little Thing She Does Is Magic oh. by The Police. I mean, it's We it's listen like, to that song a lot in my house. It's incredible. It's like that drum fill that Stuart does. Do, 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 uh. do. That drum, one drum fill I have ripped off in hundreds, <laughs> hundreds. And it's like, as a writer, it's like, it all really boils down to like, there's like, I've kind of got four basic ideas that I start with. Like there's the major key, the minor key. Um, the chromatic key, like the, doing a chromatic. So yeah, I got three ideas that I kind of start with. And it's, it's like, it's not brain surgery, but it's like the melodies and the concept are what makes them unique, right? Yeah. It's like every little thing she does is magic is just like one of those songs. It's just like, he goes, boo, do, do, do. It's just that one weird note to make it weird. And yeah. he's on an upright bass. And it's just like, the whole thing is just like, it, it, it brings me right back to driving from Saratoga to Santa Cruz to Kong's Market to go shoulder tap wine coolers because that's how cool I was. Yeah. Like, we all did the wine coolers. We like, all did the wine. I put Jolly Ranchers in mine. Like, what was that about? Exactly. Don't even ask me. That's and true. that just brings me right. It's one of those songs that just brings me to that exact time yeah. in my life. And I, um, yeah, I wish I could. I mean, that's the song that I always strive for. It's such a feel good song. I love that choice. If you were not a musician, what would you be? Um, at this point, probably a trainer. I just, oh, yeah. I, so I, I work out so you much. Do. I was on the Peloton today and I was thinking, I would work out with Allison Hagendorf. Every, if you were a Peloton trainer, you'd be my coach in every single class I for have, sure. First of all, thank you for saying that. I have to tell you that a lot of people have told me that they wish I were a Peloton trainer. Yeah. Like, is that a thing? It's a thing. I was in New York. <laughs> Last week, and I went to Peloton's, and I love the, because my knees are shot from touring for so long. It's like, so I can ride bikes because it doesn't, it's not bad on my knees. So I was, I went to a live class with Christine, I forget her name, but it was like these, these teachers are like superstars. Yeah. There was a two hour wait to get a photo with her after the class. Wow. It's like these people, they're, they're like millions and millions of Instagram followers. There's like massive, it's like this huge thing. And it's like, and my music would be on point. Your music, my would, music be would be on, so on point. Their play, and it's like you find the ones that have the playlist. Like there's so many pop punk rides, which I yeah. do. You know, it was with Kendall Tool today, and it was just like, and it's like they play. She plays so many songs that I've worked on, and I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah, but you'd be amazing. You would Thank kill you. that. I feel like I need to connect with Peloton. Just putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, seriously, because I would actually would love to do that. Yeah, that'd be a blast. You'd kill it. It'd be like a rock star ride. A rock star ride. Yeah, exactly. Rock star ride with Allison Hagendorf. Stay tuned. Amazing. Thank you. What is your most prized possession? I mean, I, I, I'm such like whatever the opposite of a pack rat is. Like I don't really hold on to anything, but I have a, um, I've got this Telefunken 251 microphone that I've used on pretty much every used record on, on every rock record I've ever made. That's just like this microphone that yeah. has like a personality to it. Yes. And it's just like, I love this. I mean, all the Blink records, we all, we just use this mic and it just sounds incredible. And, um, I don't know if that's my most prized possession, but I'm a, definitely a microphone connoisseur. I just got a, I was just thinking to, on the drive over here, I, I just got an Aston Martin and I'm like, I'm like, I, I never was this guy when I first like 
um, got signed, I had this hundred dollar Dodge Colt that I had bought from my grandma and it had one of those fuzzy steering wheels. Of course. And I ripped it off. So it was all the glue. So in summertime, my hands would get glued to the steering <laughs> wheel because it'd be like a hundred degrees out. And it's like, and I had all the Pennywise and bad religion and no effects bumper stickers all over. And I'm like, I don't need anything fancy ever. I just don't care. But now it's like, yeah, I like my fucking car. <laughs> and Aston Martin's pretty nice. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, because my son and I are super into the James Bond movies right now. And so I'm like, I'm going to get an Aston Martin. But I was Good thinking like, you. I just don't know how, how, how much it drove me to be the guy that I am having a father that was super unsupportive and said I would never make it in music and have a guy that was very, you know, he did the best he could. And I have, you know, I'm, I'm fine. And, you know, we're you know, when he passed on, I was holding his hand and, oh. and all that. But it was like at the time as a kid, we had a very gnarly relationship. And, uh, and I wonder how much of that drove me, you know, saying you're never going to make it to making sure I did make it. Oh. You know what I mean? I wonder. Wow. That's I wonder. really special. What do you hope your kids learn from you? I mean, to be kind, never give up, that there's always a solution, no matter what. There's always some way around a problem. You know, I mean, I always think like one of my best friends, Milton Dykus, who passed on as well, he would, he had Parkinson's disease and he was a really funny guy. I'd sit next to him at lunch and he'd be, she'd be shaking violently and he'd be, I'm a really nice guy. Just don't sit next to me while I'm eating soup. You know? <laughs> but he Aww. said, he said, the Aww. only handicap is a bad attitude. It's so That's true. what he said. The only handicap is a bad attitude. And this is a man that was, you know, struggled, you know, for most of the life that I knew him. And, uh, and I think that that's what hopefully I'll pass on to my kids is the idea that like never give up and that there's always a solution and that, you know, it's always about like your own attitude and, and having do whatever you can to have a positive mental attitude, whatever you can, you know, and for me, that's cold plunging and meditating and working out. You know, I've got my mental health routine and it's just like all like saying, I love my life out loud, yes. you know, saying it, whether I hate my life mm -hmm. or I love my life, I say it anyway, no matter how I feel, I just say it and it just manifests. That stuff works. It really does. I love my life. I love that. I love you. I love Delphi, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are you are a beautiful person. Thank you. You are an amazing talent, multifaceted, but most importantly, you have the best energy. You're a great, you're a great man. Thank you. Oh, so thank you for being here with Thanks, me. Thanks, Allison. Aw, oh, so wonderful. I'm serious though. I was like, I have to have Feldia. And you're amazing. Your stories are unparalleled, like insane. I know. I was thinking about like watching back in the day, just watching Zach from Rage Against the Machine, just like win our crowd over and just thinking like, you know, like what, watching all these bands and Maynard, when I was selling shoes, Maynard would come visit me all the time and just like, you know, hang out when he first moved here from Pittsburgh or wherever he's from. Yeah. And just, I don't know. It was like, I, I just have these like, but I, I mean, I moving to Los Angeles was probably the best decision I've ever made for my career. Just yeah. Being here in the heart of it all. Of course. I mean, I've lived through all these eras of like, you know, just the Fishbone, Chili Peppers, Jane's Addiction yeah. era into the Tool, Rage Against the Machine yeah, era. Yeah, that's so like, cool. And, just, and being able to survive it all. So you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you.